how negative and bipolar ionizers clean your air and surfaces. What are air ionizers? They are a device that electronically recreates the same air molecules found in nature. Ionizers charge air molecules that already exist in your stale air. These ions clean both your air and surfaces. What are the differences between negative and bipolar ionizers? A negative ionizer will remove some radiation, particulate matter, and improves your health. A bipolar ionizer removes some gases, volatile organic compounds in particular. Both remove allergens, bacteria, mold, viruses, nitrogen dioxide. Technically, both types of ionizers will remove all the pollutants mentioned regardless, but aren't necessarily efficient at it, hence why I recommend using both. I did want to note always open your windows for a few minutes every day for fresh air and CO2 reduction no matter what air purification devices you use. How are ionizers tested? The electrical field is very important. The ions are carried in a current that's a wave. It's not a particle, it's not a gas, it's a wave. The total ion density is very important because some ionizers hardly emit any ions that travel far. The emission frequency is also very important. How often are the ions emitted from the ionizer? As you can see, it makes a big difference in the rate that it's emitted. The longevity of the ions matter, the reliability of the ionizer, the size and mobility of the ions emitted, and so many more factors. This is why companies spend so much in research and development. The ion modules you find inside of HEPA purifiers are not real ionizers. They have very low ion density, very low field strength. The module itself might cost less than $1. It's a gimmick. A blue air purifier also does not contain a real ion module. It has a very misleading ion density, low field strength, and it operates completely differently from a normal ionizer. HVAC ionizers clean the air, but only when it's turned on and only for the air inside the vents. It does not clean the air in your room in real time. I still recommend these devices, but they don't work as well as an ionizer inside your room. Air ions removing particles. As the particles approach the ionizer, the ions attach to the particles, and they cause these particles to fall to the floor. Are you going to accumulate more dust with the ionizers? Nope. The average home creates over 40 pounds of dust in a year. I mean, we're always cleaning and vacuuming. Ionizers are not going to give you more dust. Ionization causes dust particles to stick together, so when you're cleaning, it actually makes it so much easier. I was really surprised by how much less dust I had with ionizers. My personal experiences with a HEPA purifier and then switching over to a negative ionizer after just one week. With a HEPA purifier, I would have to clean up dust once a week. That was normal. When I switch over to using ionizers, I had to clean up dust way less often. Again, this was so surprising to me, but ions just, just simply work so much quicker and better. Here is an example of air ions removing gaseous molecules. As the gas approaches the ionizer, the ions attach to the gas and they vaporize it. These gaseous molecules could be nitrogen dioxide, volatile organic compounds, or wheat smoke. Not all gases are amenable to ionization, but many of the common ones you find indoors are. My personal experiences with a carbon filter and a bipolar ionizer after just one week carbon filter removes gases very poorly. As you can see from this chart, the first pass rate of many gases for many common carbon filters is far too low. You'll never remove it. You would have to open a window. With a bipolar ionizer, these same gases in this chart, it just vaporizes it as soon as it touches the ions. It's not a comparison. Air ions deactivating surface viruses, bacteria, mold, dust mites, and more. Ions don't just clean the air, they also clean the surfaces. 
So if you use an ionizer, you will have less mold on your walls. It's real, it's true. It's almost surprising that um, it's not more common because who wants mold? Negative air ionizer density across a room. As you can see, the further you are in the room, you're gonna have less ions. The drop off is more significant than this is, but it really depends on how your air is. If it's clean, the ions will travel farther. If it's not clean, the ions will get knocked out quicker, but that's a good thing because that means the ions are cleaning your air. Bipolar air ionizer density across the room. It's the same concept here, but with bipolar ionization, the ions cancel each other out much easier quicker because positive and negative cancel each other out. So they may not reach as far. Air ionizer field strength across the room. Field strength refers to the electrical current that the ions travel in. It's much stronger near the ionizer. The further you go away, it drops off drastically. The ionizer will always clean best near the device. Field strength applies to both negative and bipolar ionizers. Here I have a 3D view of the field strength across the room. So you can understand conceptually how this would look like. It's important so when you use an ionizer, you have a better idea of what's going on. Air ionizer field strength across the room. This strength is very important for health purposes or for volatile organic compound removal. The further you are from the ionizer, the weaker the ion becomes. Ions can live in the air from mere seconds till two minutes. A charged particle is theorized to hold a charge for up to 30 seconds. Air ionizer density and field strength across the room. Here I just wanted to show ions by color how strong they are. So as you can see the dark blue ions near the ionizer are the strongest ions. The further you go out the ions are not as strong. Again just important to understand this concept when you use your ionizer. Air ions can travel through closed doors to continue cleaning. Just because field strength is very important doesn't mean ions can't travel far. In fact, the cleaner your air is, the further the ion will travel and it will continue cleaning wherever it goes. Air ions deactivating viruses. When the ion attacks the surface of a virus, the cell membrane is damaged and therefore the virus is deactivated. An air ion does this while the virus particle is still in the air. It's impressive. As you can see from this chart, the more ions you have, the quicker and more efficient the ions are at deactivating virus particles in the air. Here is an example of air ions deactivating a virus particle in the air. As the virus particle meets the ions, they have a little conversation and the ions don't like what's going on. So they go ahead and deactivate the virus particle and they always win. They don't ever lose. Now, after the virus is deactivated, the ions are not through yet. They will continue to knock that virus to the floor, even though it's already dead. The ions take this very personally. This is one of the least known facts about ionizers. Ions will actually deactivate an allergen while it's in the air. When the ions hit the allergen, it causes a reaction that does not allow the allergen to bond with your body. As you can see from this chart, the more ions you have, the less allergens there are in the air. It's very similar to viruses. Here's an example with and without an ionizer. So in the first animation, you can see the allergen is in the air and the person is sneezing. With an ionizer, the allergen is deactivated. So even if you inhale the allergen, you won't have any sort of reaction. An allergen can be pollen, it could be cat hair or whatever floats your boat. The exact same concept applies to a mode spore. So when ions hit a mode spore, it actually deactivates it in the air. So even if you inhaled the mode, you wouldn't have an allergic reaction to it. And of course, ions will cause the mode spore to drop to the floor. Placing both negative and bipolar ionizers within the same room is possible. You just have to be very careful about it. 
Negative ions are better for particles, bipolar are better for gases. Now, when you place them in a room, you don't want them right next to each other because ions will just cancel each other out. You want to try to spread them out. Be logical about it. If my neighbor is smoking, I want bipolar near the window so it kills the gases before they come into my room. That's just one example. You can just set it up however you like. This is one of my favorite charts showing how ionizers work. The more ions you have, the better, quicker, and more thorough of a job it will do. Now, I want to explain that if you don't have enough ions, it's not going to clean everything you would like to clean. So you have to be very careful about where you place it and how many you have. Otherwise, you're not going to get the results you may want. Now, ionizers actually drop the ozone in my home drastically. Why? Because ions attack volatile organic compounds before they even have a chance to turn into ozone. For more detailed information, read my articles at ionizerions.com. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.